Frank Lampard, Luka Modric, Andrea Pirlo, Paul Scholes, Steven Gerrard. All these names probably come to mind when we mention great midfielders, and you won't be wrong considering their prowess and technical abilities. But recently, a young lad has caught the eyes of the footballing world with his unique talent and modern day style of play in the midfield. I'm talking about Norwegian midfield maestro and currently the captain of Arsenal Football Club in England, Martin Odegaard. Today, we're going to be looking at the story of a talent, from his rise to stardom to what makes him one of the best young footballers and his midfield abilities. Hello viewers and welcome to Football Icons, a channel dedicated to all about football. So if you're a fan of the game and new to the channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to get updated on our future videos. So, without further ado, let's dive into the story of the Norwegian prodigy Martin Odegaard. Born on the 17th of December 1998 in Drama, Norway, his father Hans Erik Odegaard was actually a former pro footballer and more interestingly, the co-founder of the local sports team Drama Strong, in which Martin Odegaard would begin his early footballing journey and rose through the ranks in the junior team and was transferred to Stromsgotse in 2009 where he impressed and stayed there up until 2015 when he was scouted and sold to Spanish giants Real Madrid. In 2009, an 11-year-old Martin Odegaard joined the youth team of Stromsgotse, where he was in a mix of much older boys. He took part in various junior football competitions organised by the Norwegian FA to scout for talents in the grassroots. Odegaard impressed while just being 11 years old and against players 2 or 3 years older. In the words of his youth coach, he handles things brilliantly. Good choices, good touch, smart in his position game. Odegaard trained with his team weekly for the next 3 years. He mostly played in the left back position, as the coaches felt this would give him a positive experience with many ball touches while still playing against physically much stronger players. In attack, he was given free reign due to his ability to see solutions and spaces that we as coaches were not even close to thinking about, says his coach. In 2011, during a nationwide tournament for under 16s, a 12 year old Erdegaard impressed former football manager Lars Sharnas. He was 3 or 4 years younger than the others, it was impossible not to realise that we were witnessing something out in the ordinary. In the following year, at just age 13, Martin Odegaard began training with Strums God's first team. Yeah, you heard that right, 13 years. He made his debut in a pre-season friendly later that year and also featured for the under 17s and 19s. We are talking about a 13 year old in the midst of 16, 17, 18 and 19 year old young players. That was astonishing if you ask me. In January 2014, Stromsgotse included a 15 year old Martin Odegaard in their first team squad for the upcoming season. But owing to the fact that no professional contract was signed and he was ineligible to participate without a contract, Odegaard was included in the B team for amateur players which allowed him to be eligible for 3 matches per season. Interesting fact is that he wasn't able to train with the team during the daytime as he was still in school which was compulsory so it was agreed that he trained with another local team, Mjondalin, in the evenings, a team which his father was one of the coaching staff. He soon afterwards made his league debut for Stromsgotse in a league match against Olesund's FK on 13th of April 2014. Aged 15 and 118 days at the time, he became the youngest footballer ever to play in the Norwegian Tippeligaen. On the 5th of May, he signed his first professional contract with Stromsgotse, lasting until the end of 2015. This of course removed the restriction of 3 matches per season. 11 days later, he scored his first professional goal and became the youngest goalscorer in the Tippeligaen when he scored the 4th goal for Stromsgotse in a 4-1 home victory against Salzburg 08 FF. He made his European debut on the 16th of July in the final 5 minutes of the club's 1-0 home defeat to Stoa Bucharesti in the UEFA Champions League 2nd qualifying round. Another yet impressive performance from Odegaard in a league draw against Sandanis UEF a match which saw him back a goal and an assist including winning a penalty for his team, there was a major talk among local newspapers and pundits in the country about a national team call up for Martin Odegaard who in turn said he'd be willing to represent his country whenever he was called upon. On 15th of August the same year, in an away league match against Iker Start, Odegaard was placed on the right wing and made all three assists for Stromsgotse who won 3-2. He scored 2 goals in a match for the first time in his career in the 2-1 win against Lillestrom SK on October 19th. Stromsgotse finished 4th in the league, qualifying for the first qualifying round of the UEFA Europa League with Odegaard having scored 5 goals in 23 league games in addition to 7 assists. Wow! In December 2014, 
during the Norwegian close season, he trained with the first teams at Liverpool, Bayern Munich, and visited Arsenal's London Colney. That was definitely the start of more great things to come. After reaching an agreement with Stroms Godse in a fee worth about £3 million, Martin Odegaard was transferred to Spanish giants Real Madrid. Odegaard would train with both the first team and the reserves, and would feature mostly for the reserve team, who was coached by then Zinedine Zidane. He would be named on the first team's UEFA Champions League squad on numerous occasions, although not featuring. In April, Odegaard was dropped from the reserves after a run of four defeats, with staff finding problems with him training with the first team while playing for the reserves. In addition to the language barrier, first team manager Carlo Ancelotti called for fans to be patient while Odegaard settles into a new country. On 29th of April, he was included in Real Madrid's matchday squad for the first time for a home La Liga fixture against UD Almeria, as Ancelotti was without first team players Gareth Bale, Luka Modric and Karim Benzema through injury. However, he did not feature in a 3-0 victory. On May 23rd, in the final fixture of the season, he made his debut for Real Madrid as a 58th minute substitute for hat-trick scorer and then reigning FIFA Ballon d'Or winner Cristiano Ronaldo in an eventual 7-3 home win over Getafe CF. He became the youngest debutant in the history of the club at 16 years and 157 days old. Odegaard made his first official start for the Los Blancos in a Copa del Rey fixture against Cultural Leonesa on November 30th, 2016. During his stay at Madrid, Martin Odegaard went on different loan spells from Netherlands and back to Spain. His first loan spell was at Dutch side SC Heerenveen in 2017, where he stayed for 18 months before moving to another Dutch club, SBV Vitesse Arnhem, for the 2018-19 season, before returning to Spain in July of 2019 on loan to Real Sociedad. It was during his time at Basque Country that he really hit the ground running. He scored his first La Liga goal on 25th of August in a 1-0 win over Real Mallorca. He also registered a superb 20-yard assist in a game against Deportivo Alaves. Martin Odegaard won the La Liga Player of the Month for September, and he continued to further impress, as in early 2020, he scored against his parent club Real Madrid in a Copa del Rey quarter-final fixture to help Real Sociedad eliminate the Los Blancos. They later reached the final of the competition that year, but the final was suspended due to the COVID outbreak, which saw all football competitions put to an abrupt halt. It was a successful first full season at Real Sociedad, with Odegaard helping them to a 6th place finish and a qualification to the next season's Europa League. He missed the end of the season, having been diagnosed in June with tendinopathy, a problem that had also occurred some months earlier. After being recalled from loan by Real Madrid in 2020, Odegaard started the club's opening game of the 2020-21 La Liga season away to his former team Real Sociedad in a 0-0 draw. On 25th of November, he made his Champions League debut for Real Madrid in a 2-0 away win over Inter Milan. After a not-so-impressive first half of the season at Real Madrid, Martin Odegaard made it clear that he'd like to move elsewhere in search of regular first-team football during the winter transfer season. It was then that English Premier League side Arsenal Football Club swooped in on him and he was signed on late January, joining the club till the end of the season. Odegaard stated after his signing with the Gunners that he admired the club's style of play and quoted that, It's a team that really suits me. Three days after his signing, Martin Odegaard made his Premier League debut as a second-half substitute in a 0-0 draw with Manchester United. He made his first start soon after in a 4-2 win over Yorkshire side Leeds United. On March 11th, Odegaard scored his first goal for Arsenal with a 20-yard strike and a 3-1 away win over Greek giants Olympiakos in the first leg of the UEFA Europa League round of 16 tie. That goal was later voted as the goal of the month in March on the Arsenal official website. On March 14th, Odegaard scored in back-to-back -back games, picking up his first Premier League goal in a 2-1 home win over Tottenham Hotspur in the 203rd North London derby. Due to his stellar performance in March 2021, he was later voted as the Player of the Month on Arsenal's official website. Astonishing first few months for the Gunners if you ask me. Following his impressive loan spell, Arsenal made the signing of Martin Odegaard a permanent one during the summer transfer window in a deal worth £35 million, pending a four-year deal with the Gunners. He scored his first goal that season with a superb free kick against Burnley, a goal which turned out to be the winner in a 1-0 victory over the CL Superb. His first full season with Arsenal was a one of mixed feelings as they finished in 5th place, narrowly missing out on the UEFA Champions League automatic qualification spot. After the departure of club captain Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and vice-captain Alexander Lacazette, 
Arsenal's coach Mikel Arteta named Martin Odegaard the captain of the team for the 2022-23 season. He has come a long way and a well-deserved role to be honest. Anyways, his first appearance as the club's captain came at the opening game of the season with a 2-0 win at Selhurst Park over fellow London side Crystal Palace. Odegaard would win the Premier League Player of the Month award for November to December 2022, following an impressive run of form before the World Cup break. He became the first Arsenal player to win the award since Aubameyang won it in September 2019, and would become the second Norwegian to win the award, joining his national teammate and close friend Erling Haaland. Recently, on 15th of January 2023, Odegaard scored an impressive long-range goal in a 2-0 win over Tottenham Hotspur, which was Arsenal's first away win against their rivals since 2014. Currently, he is leading Arsenal close to the Premier League title as they sit comfortably in first place. He'd look to help his side win the league for the first time since the Invisibles in 2004. Martin Odegaard has represented Norway on all age levels, from under 15 to under 21, and has featured in various competitions internationally. He was called up to represent the senior national team for an international friendly against the UAE, becoming the youngest player to feature for Norway at 15 years and 253 days. He was also invited to partake in the UEFA Euro 2016 qualifying games, of which he played some part in them. On the 29th of March 2015, Erdegaard became the youngest player to start a European Championship qualifier at the age of 16 years and 101 days in a 5-1 loss to Croatia. On the 8th of June, he was man of the match in Norway's 0-0 friendly draw with Scandinavian rivals Sweden in Oslo. After Norway came third in their qualification group, Erdegaard was named in their squad for a playoff against Hungary. Unused in the first leg, he was substituted at half-time in the second on November 15th, as Norway lost 2-1 on the night and 3-1 on aggregate, thereby missing out on the qualification to the Euros tournament. Erdegaard scored his first international goal against Romania in a UEFA Euro 2020 qualifying match, which ended with a 2-2 draw. In March 2021, Erdegaard was appointed as the captain for the national team Stolle Sulbaken, captain for both country and club. Impressive for a young lad. Dubbed a modern day midfielder with his fantastic ball technique, passing abilities and vision as well as his great dribbling skills and deadly ball deliveries from set plays, Martin Odegaard is definitely on course to be one of Europe's most creative and technical midfielders. Embedded with talent, Odegaard, who is left-footed, had been compared with the likes of Mesut Ozil due to his creativity and directness on the pitch and ability to find spaces in tight situations. A hard-working player with excellent pace, Erdegaard is an energetic, effective presser of the ball, often covering large distances in order to help his team win back possession. In both loan spells with Real Sociedad and Arsenal, Erdegaard was statistically one of the most productive pressers on his team, not forgetting his superb shooting ability. It's worthy to note that Martin Erdegaard is just 24 years of age, and is already a captain of both Norway national team and Arsenal football club. He is definitely on the right path to be one of Arsenal's greats, as he'd hoped to see his team lift the Premier League title at the end of the season. Who would have thought a small boy from Dramen would go on to be one of the best in the world in terms of midfielders? Well, the signs were there to see during his earlier years, as his talents constantly showed. There you have it folks, the story of a star, Martin Odegaard. Thanks for watching as always, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, and see you in the next video.